This channel is designed for adults viewing only and certain videos will contain rated M for mature video games, featuring realistic violence, gore and suggestive themes. If you are not an adult, do not view the content on this channel. Don't go anywhere, stay tuned. Get ready to take a trip down memory lane. WCW vs NWO Revenge. Actually, this World Tour, not Revenge. It's WCW vs NWO World Tour, that is. For the Nintendo 64. It's going to be the first Nintendo 64 game that we're covering. Uh, there was probably some that were uploaded previously here on Gaming Palooza, but uh, this is definitely the first one that I'm actually recording. And right there on the front cover, you have the giant and Hollywood Hulk Hogan. You get the N64 logo right there. You got the awesome uh, label art. I mean, if you're a fan of 90s wrestling, like I was, man. As soon as you saw that, definitely want to buy the game, go out and buy it. It's definitely a really cool AKI wrestling game, THQ. And uh, yeah, this is definitely uh, during that time where the NWO was big, real big. Definitely want to definitely check this out. And we have uh, WrestleMania and a lot of major wrestling shows occurring this week. Unfortunately, in, uh, WCW doesn't exist anymore. WCW was definitely a huge company back in the day. I uh, definitely miss WCW. They had awesome wrestling games, and this is no exception. This is basically their first N64 wrestling game right here. So, without any further ado, we get the uh, Nintendo 64 right here. You see I was playing a little quick too right there. Let's pop it in. Now let's play some WCW versus NWO World Tour and Radical Vision. All right, so here we are playing WCW versus NWO World Tour on the Nintendo 64. This is the real, authentic copy. We got the uh, giant right there in the ring. Got Hulk Hogan out there showing off, taunting, and then Sting chops down from the ceiling. What the hell is going on here? Oh, the Hulkamania leg drop, and you got Diamond Dallas Page. You got Kevin Nash doing a power bomb right there. And Sting doing the uh, Scorpion Death Drop. And we got the WCW versus NWO World Tour title screen with the ring spinning right there in the center. I mean, how awesome is that? <laughs> it says you cannot save at this point. Do you want to play without saving? I don't have a uh, pack, controller pack, so it's going to have to be that for now. Oh yeah, that music. I remember that WCW vs. NWO World Tour music. Oh man. It takes me back. All the way back. to like, <laughs> probably like 20 years ago. Man, I could just leave that on. Alright, let's check out what we got here. We got Exhibition, we got the WCW versus NWO mode. Select a five wrestler team for a head-to-head -head elimination match. It's kind of like Survivor Series. Now, uh, we'll check out Exhibition mode. We got one-on-one -on -one single, two-on-two -two tag, two versus one handicap, and Battle Royal. We'll check out one-on-one -on -one for now. And in the red corner, controlled by player. <laughs> and in the blue corner, controlled by CPU. Is that pretty fitting? And now these are all your wrestlers right here. And I kind of like how each wrestler has like a, instead of a real picture, it's like an illustration, like hand-drawn. So that's Chris Benoit, but it's like a hand-drawn version of Chris Benoit over there. And the, look at that, that's pretty cool. You got Rey Mysterio Jr., he actually still wrestles, but yeah, he was in a lot of the old classic WCW games back in the day. Look at that. Eddie Guerrero, what a classic. We got Rick Steiner. Nature Boy, Ric Flair, and I, yeah, woo, can't do the woo too well, but yeah, check out the roster. The roster is all, look at the giant when he was young. This is crazy. 
And of course, if you hit left and right on your controller on top, you have the NWO stable right here. You have Hogan, you have the uh, fake Sting. You have the uh, Buff Bagwell, Eric Bischoff, Six, Scott Hall, Kevin Nash, and you have Scott Norton. And you have a DOA. So I'm not exactly sure who these guys are, but Hannibal, Powder Keg, <laughs> Dim Sum. I'm not sure if these guys are supposed to be like fictional. And then you have the uh, independent union, which is the independent circuit. It's like the first wrestling game that had a selection of independent wrestlers, indie wrestlers. You had the Black Ninja. You had the uh, Chalun. The Unknown. The Claw. Master Fuji. Shaman. Paco Loco. And they have a black belt and uh, the, yeah, the claw. Once again, I actually probably went over him twice. And uh, so that's your selection of wrestlers. So let's choose. Uh, let's see here. Hollywood Hulk Hogan versus. Lex Luger. So, quick match here. Alright, you choose your, your arenas right here. You choose uh, the NWO arena. Alright, you can also set handicaps. So, of course, Hulk Hogan's going to have a handicap. It almost looks like Hulk Hogan doesn't even have pupils. What the hell is going on there? That looks weird. Yeah. Hulk Hogan's going to make him a jobber. We got the NWO Arena. Uh, Lex Luger showing off. <laughs> this pretty funny looking Lex Luger. And of course, that's a funny looking Hulk Hogan. But this is an AKI wrestling game, so what do you expect? Get over here. Oh, Hogan's doing a leg drop. How about that? Oh man, it's been forever since I played one of these games. Trying to remember how to play these games. He says, oh man, it's been, f oh yeah, take that. <laughs> this is insane. Oh, he you need him right in the face. It's a dirty tactic by Hogan. What, what's he doing here? Oh, he need him in the, in the knee. <laughs> Kicking him. Oh, kick. Let's see what we can do here. He's picking him back up. And it looks like he's... Oh! Lex Luger countered whatever that was. It looks like he was being groped for a second. By Hollywood Hulk Hogan. Oh! Hulk Hogan clotheslined the hell out of him. It's shades of JBL right there. What the hell is going on here? It was like Hulk Hogan is going to throw... It. Oh! That did not work. And Lex Luger drop-kicked Hogan in the face. There's a lot of play going on in the corner here. Oh, what the hell? The drop kicks are amazing. Look at this. He, oh, he broke Hulk Hogan's arm! Lex Luger broke Hulk Hogan's arm. What the hell is going on? This is unbelievable action here. I didn't give him Blue's Empire. Oh, you need him right to the face. Take that, Triple H. So when you go outside the ring... Oh my god. You actually have a guy that counts. You can hear that. There's actually a voice. You see Hogan's using his dirty tactics trying to get a count out. He's showing off! He's taunting! Unbelievable! Oh, man. Oh, the leg drop! Another leg drop! He did two leg drops to Lex Luger. Somehow Lex Luger no sold both and got up. That is. What? Oh, you, oh no. The guardrail is coming into play. I, not, I don't remember if this game actually has weapons or not. I don't think. Nine. 
Oh, there's a 20 count. You can see how the crowd looks. The crowd kind of looks a little uh, primitive, to say the least. And it still looks better than the Warzone crowd. Or <laughs> the Warzone crowd that's staying still. Yeah, he knocked the crap out of him. I think that's it. Oh, he knocked him out. He literally knocked him out. You can saw that Lex Luger is compulsing right now, and he, he struggled to get back up. And Hulk Hogan used his vicious knee, instead of doing a leg drop, he actually kneed him right in the face. It's one thing I remember in this game, you can actually knock out your opponent. The uh, AKA, AKI engine would have been pretty cool to see like an MMA game on the uh, Nintendo 64, that would have been awesome. So let's check out another uh, another match right here. Let's see what we got here. Let's do uh, a tag team match. And we're going to choose NWO, Hollywood Hulk Hogan, and let's see. Actually, you know what? We're going to do Hall and Nash. It's a perfect opportunity to pick Hall and Nash. Let's see who else we have here. We'll do Lux Luger and Sting. Quite often those two will team together. And we'll pick the WCW Arena. There's not too many arenas in this game. But this is a, the first AKI wrestling game for uh, 64. As far as the WCW game goes. And we'll leave everything the way it is right here. And we'll have a tag team match. Got Lex Luger showing off with his big, huge uh, jaw. Got the Stinger. And the uh, 64 graphics always looked like they had really fat looking wrestlers. Like, pretty damn fat looking. We got Kevin uh, Nash and Scott Hall right here. And they kind of gave Scott Hall the hair. On his uh, body that he usually has, but it's kind of shaved on both sides, so it's like running down the center of his body. It's quite interesting. So Kevin Nash is definitely dominating Lex Luger right now. Lex Luger is being very cautious. What the hell? It appears that. Oh, what? Lex Luger got back in the ring. It's definitely getting dominated by... Oh, man! And you can see that Kevin Nash is, like, showing off. It's definitely not a big deal to him at all. Oh, Sting's being tagged in. Oh, no. We got a fresh Sting coming into the ring. We got to tag in uh, Scott Hall here. Let me see if we can figure out how to tag. I've kind of forgot. After all these years. I'm still looking at him. Oh, God. <laughs> this is not good. Damn. Wow, that almost looks like a knockout. Get in the ring. <laughs> oh, what? Whoa. Oh! He did a freaking powerbomb to him. And Scott Hall is so drunk that he forgot that he's not the legal man. Oh. Oh my god, what the... Get in the ring, Scott Hall. And now Lex Luger is getting... Oh, almost looks like a brain buster for a second. Of course, Select Luger just walks straight through us. It ruins a perfect spot in the match right here. We've got a test of strength. Oh, look at that. That is amazing. Oh, he got cool slide outside the ring. One. Got big sexy outside the ring right here. Now he's showing off. Pissing the sting off. Sting tried to do a suicide dive type thing going on. Yeah, this piece of crap Lex Luger trying to show off. And all hell is breaking loose. It looks like Scott Hall is trying to figure out what to do, but he can't figure it out. 
He's running back and forth. He's Irish whooping. Right. Damn, we're going to get a count out. Get in the ring. 15. Are you kidding me? Everybody's getting in the ring all at once. What the, what the hell is going on here? Oh. Looks like uh, Kevin Nash did an elbow drop to like nothing. What in the world is going on? It looks like Lex Luger and Kevin Nash are brawling outside the ring. Oh, he's out. Oh, oh, he slammed them down to the mat out there, and they got Sting and Scott Hall going at it. Nine. It's definitely some dirty NWO tactics going on here. Got a rope break. And uh, it looks like Lex Luger made it back in the ring. He's not the legal man, but he's definitely trying to uh, cause a distraction here. Oh, man. Oh, the big boot. And it looks like Kevin Nash has a special right here, so something bad's about to happen. Let's see if we can pick him up and uh, make magic happen here. Oh, he's gonna do his finisher! Oh, yeah! Now, how do we pin? Oh, that's certainly not the pin. Alright, so we have to figure out how to pin. And he keeps working on his leg right there. That's definitely not what the intentions are, but it's definitely going to work for us. And it looks like they knocked Sting out cold. So, some stiff action going on right here. It looks like we got some strong style, Japanese style wrestling. And Kevin Nash knocks Sting out cold in the middle of the ring. While Lex Luger looks on. And as you saw, Lex Luger got knocked out by Hollywood Hulk Hogan earlier in the game and uh, the NWO is definitely strong in this game very strong let's try out one more match let's see what we got going on here just for the hell of it we'll try the two versus one handicap match and we'll we know what we'll have two computer guys versus me and now we're gonna pick some someone that can definitely kick two guys ass at once let's see here Scott Norton definitely looks like the guy that could get that job done so we're gonna pick Scott Norton all right so this is the red corner let me just make sure I'm picking okay we don't want to pick Scott Norton yet so we're picking out we're gonna pick two cruiserweights we're gonna pick Rey Mysterio And we're going to pick, uh, you can tell that the Cruiserweights were actually very valuable in uh, WCW back in the day because, I mean, look at this, they only have 12, 4, 8, 12, uh, selectable WCW wrestlers and they have, let's see here, they have one, two, at least three Cruiserweights on, on the selection right here. And then you have uh, the mid, mid Carters like Chris Benoit, Steven Regal. Dean Malenko, which typically they would go after like the US title or something like that. And then of course you had tag team guys like uh, Scott and Rick Steiner. So we're going to pick the Ultimate Dragon. And then we're going to have them battle up against uh, Scott Norton. And uh, yeah, this is going to be a really... We can change the count right here. You have a Lumberjack match. I'm not sure if this game has blood in it or not. I, I remember uh, Revenge, I believe, had blood. It's been a, it's just a long time since I played this game. So Scott Norton's going to have a huge advantage because how big he is, these guys are going to have a slightly lower advantage. Yeah, I, did, I believe Scott Norton spent 
He, he does not look like he's happy at all. He looks a little pissed off. Pretty cool looking Rey Mysterio. We got Ultimo Dragon. So you got the best of Mexico and the best of Japan right here. And I think Scott Norton spent quite a quite a long time wrestling in Japan as well. Someone's gonna get knocked out. And already they try to pin me. What the hell is he doing? Let me see if we can uh, kick some ass here. He's looking at. Take that. We got Scott Norton dominating the cruiserweight division. I remember on uh, WCW there was one time that uh, Kevin Nash beat up uh, Rey Mysterio and he threw him up threw him up against the, the uh, side of a uh, studio trailer or something like that. Something. Yeah, he did beat the crap out of him. It was during that time that NWO was fairly new and they worked out. I believe that was down in Florida when that happened. They called like they actually someone actually called the police and the fire department. So there's like real police and fire department showing up. So everybody thought that it was an actual real gang. That's how crazy the NWO was. And how the hell is Ultimo Dragon matching the strength of Scott Norton? Come on, there's a huge size difference here. Wow, the cruiserweights are actually dominating, even with a disadvantage. <laughs> He's... This is ridiculous. Okay, that is definitely a lethal move for uh, Ultimate Dragon, because Scott Norton is massive. And for him to do like a shoulder charge at him like that. So we, oh, the elbow. So far, Scott Norton has not shown any... Oh, whoa, 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 he's gonna do a. Looks like a. Oh no. Looks like a Boston Crab there for a second. You got Rey Mysterio trying to. Trying to outstrength Scott Norton. Are you kidding me? It's not gonna happen. What the hell? Bam, take that, Rey Mysterio. Somebody has her special. I think it's actually me that has my special here. And he did it, the power bomb, which I believe is his special. And Rey Mysterio, <laughs> you see, Ultimate Dragon got hurt. He couldn't handle the power bomb, and Rey Mysterio ran away fast. As soon as he saw the power bomb, he ran out outside the ring. He abandoned his partner. He didn't want none of that. So that's WCW versus NWO World Tour on the uh, Nintendo 64. What a fantastic uh, primitive wrestling game on the 64. It's the first installation of AKI, AKI wrestling games on the 64 in North America, and probably over in Europe also. In Japan, they got something else, probably like a New Japan or All Japan wrestling game, using the same exact engine. So yeah, this game is awesome. And it was the game that started the AKI series, so the next came Revenge, then WrestleMania 2000, and No Mercy. So you get like the best of both worlds. You had WCW games, and eventually the uh, WWF games. Uh, yeah, this game gets, gets a thumbs up in my opinion. And uh, what do you think of Wrestling Week so far? Comment down below, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And if you're new to Gaming Blues Empire and Memory Lane, don't forget to subscribe. Uh, today we're going to be taking a look at WCW vs. NWO Revenge. I mean, check that label art out right there. That is pretty cool. Let's see if I can run to agree with me. Let's see if we can back up for a second. Okay, right there. That's, that's okay. So right there on the front cover, you have Hulk Hogan, you have Kevin Nash, you have... Uh, Raven, who was previously in ECW, and of course you have Bill Goldberg, he's like the main cell right there. Goldberg was super hot back then. Uh, basically Hulk Hogan pushed Goldberg to the moon, especially 
on that uh, WCW Nitro when uh, Goldberg beat Hulk Hogan for the uh, world title. A lot of people say that Hulk Hogan doesn't never put anyone over, but man, that's the reason why Goldberg did get over. Uh, look at the labor. They have a lot of variety of wrestlers on there, and Raven is like the oddball on there. That's so probably, I don't know how Raven got on the on the label art. He wasn't really that big of a star in WCW. He was he was like a mid carter. I mean, they could have probably put someone else on there, like Sting or you know someone else. That's kind of strange, but yeah, you have WCW NWO Revenge, and you have the THQ logo right here, the old THQ logo. We got the N64. Red E for everyone. So yeah, it's been probably many, many years since I played this game. I don't quite remember everything about this game. It looks like it's in pretty good shape. So we're going to pop it in here on the Nintendo 64 right here. And we're going to check it out. Everything about this game is in pretty good shape. Pop it in here on the Nintendo 64. Check it out. Everything about Hogan, Kevin Nash. He had a uh, Raven, which is a bit of an oddball to be on the cover, and he had a uh, Goldberg. And here's the famous revenge int introduction right here with the uh, tractor trailer truck. Completely random. It's a very, very bizarre introduction. I remember when I first played this game, I was like, "What the hell is this?" Let's check this out. Have a huge 18 wheeler truck that's driving down the road. Maybe it's one of WCW's production trucks. You have a nice cool lightning effect right there. And the truck is pulling up to, uh. So it looks like something's going on here. What the hell is that? I got some fire. And, uh. It's Sting! It looks like Stinger! The Stinger! The uh, scorpion stinger, the uh, the one that looks like the crow. I mean, look at this. It's like Sting has two barrels that are on fire, and the, the truck driver is just as shocked as we are. We have uh, the back of Hulk Hogan right there with a uh, heartbeat. We have the NWO, and Hulk Hogan's coming out doing the uh, guitar to uh, Voodoo Child. We have. Uh, Kevin Nash coming out to the really cool NWO Nitro set. Hot! You have Miss Elizabeth right there. You have uh, the whole NWO right there. Not the whole NWO, the NWO contains too many guys. And Goldberg right there. DDP! What a cool introduction. The whole truck thing kind of threw me off a little bit, but then the introduction gets better and better. You have Goldberg right there. Booker T. The Macho Man Randy Savage with Miss Elizabeth. Kevin Nash. We got the NWO. That is pretty cool. What the hell is that? Was Scott Hall wearing something that he wasn't supposed to be wearing? That was weird. What is the... We got uh, Bret Hart. Did someone mess with the attire in this game? This is the first time I've actually played this game since I bought it. Oh yeah, look at that. The uh, the giant's definitely wearing something he's not supposed to be wearing. That's kind of weird. Maybe this game has the saved capabilities. You have WCW, you have Disco Inferno and Alex right? Wow, look at this. Dean Malenko. Big pop pump. pump. La Parka, all right. Got all the cruiserweights. So there appears to be some really, really strange, uh, bizarre attire changes that were done in this game. And I believe that the game may have safe capabilities, uh, unlike um, WCW versus NWO World Tour. You cannot save on that cartridge. I think on Revenge you can. You have Raven right there for a second. Uh, for some reason, WCW added Raven on the uh, label of the game, which... Hey, that's a... Uh, what the hell is that? 
What's that? Scott Hall and Kevin Nash wearing some really weird stuff. That really confuses the hell out of me. You have Sting right there. You have Hulk Hogan burning in a fire right there. What a heartbeat. And Hulk Hogan shows off, yeah. You got the lightning strike. You got Sting right there. What a cool introduction. Oh my god. <laughs> you got the lightning sparking in between both of them. You got the WCW NWO Revenge for Nintendo 64. I feel like I'm doing an advertisement. You have the uh, really cool looking uh, Halloween Havoc set right there. Uh, Rumble Pack support. I don't have a rumble pad. So just for the hell of it. I mean, just look at this. That's definitely not Big Show. And first of all, he wasn't called Big Show in WCW. So somebody definitely went into the game and changed uh, quite a few things. You have Brian Adams. You have Scott Hall. That's definitely not Scott Hall's attire. Scott Norton. You have... Buff Bagwell also wearing a, what it looks like a La Parka outfit. So it looks like someone was a fan of uh, La Parka. It's like half the roster's wearing La Parka outfits. Look, we have a Terminator. Oh, I was expecting a Arnold Schwarzenegger for a second. We got Conan! We have a... Uh, Lex Luger, Sting, Kevin Nash looks normal, you got Raven, you got a Raven's flock right here. Okay, so that's probably the reason why they added Raven on the cover. Roddy Piper, Diamond Dallas Page, you got Bret Hart. So everybody here looks somewhat normal. Canyon. Van Hammer, Ming Glacier. Well, this is a bit of a throwback. You got British Bulldog, Jim the Animal Nightheart. He's definitely wearing something different. He should not be wearing that. And now uh, you got this Inferno. You got a Parker. This is a really weird stable. You got Larry Sabisco, Barbarian Laparka, and Stevie Ray. Chris Jericho, Eddie Guerrero, they spelt Eddie wrong, I think. Psychosis, Rey Mysterio Jr., The Malenko, Uva 2, Ultimo Dragon, they have a lot of cruiserweights. Alex Wright, and they got EWF. They got AKI Man. So, who else they got here? And that's it. So, yeah, there is a few wrestlers in here. Big Show. <laughs> that uh, don't belong having uh, the attire that they do. So let's play the game. And right away you have some really cool looking uh, stages. And WCW always had really cool looking stages. And this game actually made the stages look awesome. Like, look at that. Super Brawl. That's a cool looking stage. So we'll choose Hollywood Hulk Hogan, and then we'll choose, uh, we'll see who we got here. Do Hulk Hogan versus, uh, let's see. I guess we'll do Hulk Hogan versus... It's kind of tough. We'll do Goldberg. Keep them both the same, they're about even. And do no ring outs, uh, time limit, no DQ, no no DQ, so it looks like someone's been playing around with this already. Let's see, do we have a uh, some WSW Nitro theme song music? So instead of having like the NWO music, they have Nitro music. 
Look at that, the cool looking pyro. Look at that. That is crazy looking. Hulk Hogan's uh, coming out with Eric Bischoff. And Hulk Hogan getting into the ring right here. And all of a sudden the Super Brawl set shrunk big time. It looks a lot smaller than it was a second ago. You have Hulk Hogan showing off. That's actually pretty awesome. A lot better than uh, the previous World Tour game. You have Bill Goldberg. And Bill Goldberg is doing his uh, thing right there. His uh, pyro coming out. And that's definitely not Goldberg's theme song. But you know, this game actually did not have uh, the proper theme songs. And he's checking the ropes out, make sure the ropes are uh, in good shape. And right away, Hulk Hogan charged at Goldberg. I like the red-looking aisle. Is, the, the, the game looks really good. You got the uh, triangle-shaped turnbuckles. Very polygonish looking. Yeah, Hulk Hogan is kicking some ass right now. Look at that. It's unbelievable. Yeah, Goldberg is definitely uh, on the receiving end of an ass beating that he definitely uh, is having a hard time handling here. And it looks like Goldberg is coming back. Now, Hulk Hogan did some cruiserweight shit right there for a second. I don't know, I'm not sure what that was, but... Get over here, go- oh! Oh, dirty tactics. He used the uh, turnbuckle. And he used the ropes. And you can see Hogan showed off. He's taunting on the outside of the ring. He's pissing over and off. And there's a chair. <laughs> oh my god. And the ch where the hell did the chair go? It, it completely disappeared. And, uh, what is that? Is that a briefcase? This is long before the Money in the Bank briefcase. It was like... Oh, it disappeared. So as soon as you drop the weapon, it disappears. And, oh, Hogan went for the leg drop already. Oh, he speared him outside the ring! What the hell was that? Holy crap. Let's look at some of these signs out here. You see that, that pink sign? It says NWO... Something, I can't quite read it. So we can knock Cobra down to the link trunk. He's gonna do a suplex right here. And that is an awesome uh, suplex. Alright, got him down, so... Pissing Goldberg off. Goldberg's really pissed off right now. They have a stop sign. Alright. So now we definitely have the ability to use weapons. And it looks like we busted Goldberg open, potentially. So yeah, Hogan's choking him out. So Goldberg is definitely on, uh, <laughs> not doing too good right now. Let's see what we got here. Damn, Hogan's looking strong in this match. It's kind of funny because when Hogan uh, was in the NWO, he lost most of his matches. We got the uh, fans right here in the front row. They look like they're wearing either sting masks or uh, Leparka masks. The crowd actually looks pretty cool. They only have like two or three different frames to them. Like they move around a little bit, but they actually look pretty good. Let's see if we can get up here, get them to the top rope, and see if we knock them down. Oh! Now, at first glance, the uh, N64 wrestling games kind of look 
not quite as pretty as the SmackDown games are on the uh, on the PlayStation or you know the Warzone or anything like that. But uh, once you start playing it, you're like, oh yeah, this game is definitely uh, much better controls. Hung his ass out on the ropes right there. Oh, he went to go do a leg drop. That didn't work out. Let's see if we can do a leg drop. Bam! He's gonna do another leg drop. And Hogan is a dirty heel, so he's gonna go outside the ring. And he's gonna grab another briefcase. Come on, Goldberg. You want some of this? Come on. It looks like Goldberg is taunting him. And uh, that didn't work out too well for Goldberg. It's the biggest briefcase I've ever seen. What the hell is inside that briefcase? It's the Hogan's uh, paycheck. <laughs> In cash. How much is Hogan getting paid for this pay-per-view appearance? Quite a bit of thousands of dollars. Thousands. Perhaps millions. And you see Hogan's really pissed off. Hogan's climbing the top rope. Oh! He's working the knee right there. So let's see if we can figure out a pin. Figure out a roll. So that's how you roll them around. It's not exactly what I wanted to do, but... It's been such a long time since I played this game. That is not what I want to do. Oh, he headbutted him. Now he's choking him again. Holy crap. He's trying to kill Goku. This is murder. And he's showing off. Alright, so let's see here. He's picking him back up. Okay. Looks like he's doing another uh, suplex to him. He's gonna let him hang up. Let's blood rush to his head so I can feel it just a little bit more. He's making Goldberg pay for being Goldberg. Alright, so. I forgot what had a pin in this game. It's kind of funny. It's a leg sweep. Alright, so I'm down in the... He's dragging his ass around the ring like a piece of crap. Slapped him in the face. Very disrespectful. Oh, he did the boot! What else is next? He's using his shoulder as a weapon in the corner of the ring. And what do we got here? A Boston Crab. Yeah. Oh my god, he broke his back. It's like the Iron Sheik. He took a page out of the Iron Sheik's uh, playbook. He definitely uh, broke his back and make, made him humble. We got the WCW Nitro theme song right there with the replay. You can see Goldberg's back. The expression on his face, he's definitely hurting. He broke his back right here. Oh, he pulled back and he broke his back and you see Hogan's... showing no mercy. He got up all nonchalant. Look at that, watch this, right here. Oh, right there he broke his back. And you see Goldberg tapping. Vicious. All right, so it looks like Goldberg is going to be out for a little while. He's injured. So let's check out. Let's see what else we got here. We got Halloween Havoc, Starcade. Let's check out Starcade. You know what? Let's check out Nitro. And we'll do a cruiserweight match. Let's see if we can pick a cruiserweight. I'm going to be Laparka versus Psychosis. 
can fall, TKOs can be definitely on. Uh, we'll put Ring out on 20. Here comes Parka to uh, the generic WCW Nitro music. And believe it or not, Parker still wrestles. He's a chairman. You see he's doing his uh, guitar motion right there. And the uh, Nitro set all of a sudden got much, much smaller than it did before. You can see right there, it still looks cool though. Got yeah, Parker taught in the crowd. And then we have Psychosis making his way to the ring. Uh, Psychosis uh, has another uh, generic theme song. It's definitely not his original theme song. It's one thing that I loved about WCW, WCW back in the day was uh, the cruiserweight action. The cruiserweights were awesome. Alright, let's see what this match has. And right away, Laperka has a chair! Oh my god, what the hell? I did not expect that to happen. What was that? What the hell is that? And Laperka is a dirty fighter. He started the match with a chair. What a cheater. And uh, Psychosis is really pissed off about that. And, uh, you see Laperka threw Psychosis in the corner. And... Leparka is taunting Psychosis. He's doing his Leparka little dance. Oh my god. And Psychosis is not having that at all. Looks like uh, we're having a standoff right here. They're both pretty even. Leparka is throwing Psychosis up against the rope. Oh my god. Shoulder. 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 Whatever the hell that's called. Now it looks like we're trying to get a pitfall right here. Definitely did not work out for uh, Leparka. And uh, Leparka is twisting uh, Psychosis' arms into, uh... Oh, no, man. Oh! Whoa! What the hell was that? This amazing cruiserweight action here on Revenge on 64. Wow. How exciting. What a great game this is. And even though, uh, WWF 2000 or WrestleMania 2000 and Revenge... Not Revenge. No Mercy and WrestleMania 2000 came out after this game. It was still missing all the Cruiserweight action. This game is like the best Cruiserweight game right here. This game is awesome. And what the hell is uh, Psychosis going to do? It looks like Laparka is climbing the... Oh, he landed on the mat. It looks like we got something... Oh, no. Oh, Power Driver. Stop at the back of his head. That's very dirty tactics. Yeah, it looks like Psychosis is Irish whipping him into the corner. And uh, Leparka missed the, the dropkick right there. There's a lot of miscommunication going on here. Got a shoulder hit, lock, whatever. Suicide dive. Breaking his arm. Oh, yeah. What do we got going on here? Oh, that is an awesome move, whatever that was. And Leparka is doing some crazy shit. And what, what is this? Oh, it looks like a special. It's like Kostas kicked out of his special. What? what? Like, how is that even possible? Oh, he missed him completely. And uh, Leparka is a really angry uh, Mexican right now. He's jumping outside the ring. And he smashed him with his shoulder. And he's grabbing a... What the hell is that? Is that a baseball bat? Oh, he's, he hit Psychosis with a freaking baseball bat. Oh my god, he tried to kill Psychosis. He slammed him very hard to the, uh, on the, uh, cement. It's definitely not even the map. Oh, 
Oh my god. What's gonna happen here? Oh, he freaking flipped outside the ring. What the hell? I'm trying to do a pinfall outside the ring. That cannot happen. It looks like Psychosis is fighting back. This is definitely a really out of control. Uh... Let's see what. Okay. I think Parker has had enough here. And he threw him out. Let me pull this out outside the ring. All right, let's see what we got here. Oh my god, that's awesome! What a blast! This game definitely captures the uh, cruiserweight action. Oh my god, this is insane! Man, what Parker is taunting the crowd. And Psychosis. Psychosis is definitely in bad shape. And Leparka stole the win. What a fantastic cruiserweight match that was. That was awesome. And that is the reason why, hands down, that I love WCW NWO Revenge on 64. I haven't played this game in years, but man. Got the cool WCW Nitro music right there. And uh, the cruiserweight action, this, the cool selection of cruiserweight wrestlers that they have from Mexico and Japan. And uh, it's just awesome. And AKI definitely pulled off. Like the actual, it feels like you're watching a cruiserweight match. It's awesome. There's a few botches here and there, but hey. WCW versus NW Revenge is awesome. And uh, if you never played it on Nintendo 64, man, it's a blast from the past. You don't know what you're missing. What a great game. I personally enjoy Revenge a tad bit better than uh, WrestleMania 2000 and uh, No Mercy. Only because of the Cruiserweight wrestlers. Big fan of Cruiserweights. So if you enjoyed this episode of Memory Lane, don't forget to give a thumbs up for uh, Leparka and Psychosis' great performance. And uh, comment down below uh, what is your favorite Cruiserweight wrestler? And uh, what do you think of this week's Wrestlemania and all kinds of wrestling shows going on. What are you going to be watching this week? Uh, yeah, if you enjoy Wrestling Week here on Gaming Blues, don't forget to give a thumbs up and uh, comment down below. Alright, here we are playing Nintendo 64. And we're... You hear that? We're playing Backstage Assault on Nintendo 64 here. Tony Schiavone going crazy right there. And uh, I never played the Nintendo 64 version of this game. Uh, this is one of those Electronic Arts WCW games that came out right before WCW went out of business. And I have played the PlayStation version of this game and boy was that game not good at all. Let's check out this uh, N64 version of Backstage Assault. Alright, so on the main menu you have Exhibition, Hardcore Challenge, Hardcore Gauntlet, Create a Superstar, Hall of Champions, and Global Options right there. And everything else here is pretty standard, get easy difficulty, all that crap. Alright, so uh, this is one thing I kind of never understood about this game is it has uh, multiple brackets similar to like uh, WCW um, Revenge and all those other games but the only big difference is like if you go to bracket number one WCW one it doesn't make any sense to me you have Jeff Sherd and then if you go to the bottom you have Tori Wilson you have one two three four five like about five guys that are missing that you have to unlock like that's so stupid you know to me I think that's most of the game is locked up. Like, what the hell? That's what a, a double axe handle looks like from uh, Booker T, as you can see right there. 
Uh, spinning back fist. Ooh, yeah, I took that, you son of a bitch. Do a quick punch? Yeah, I took that. Do a little bit of a punch right there. And a uh, power punch. And a quick low kick. And a Harlem sidekick right there, and there we go. Now, Booker C actually doesn't look half bad in this game, surprisingly, because the, uh, the PlayStation version of this game, the graphics are horrible. Like, bad. The uh, backstage area, so right now the only thing that we have unlocked is the Truck Arena. So let's go to the Truck Arena and have a fight. Then <laughs> we have uh, a horrible rendition of both Hulk Hogan and Ric Flair. Right now, I, I don't know what the hell the controls are on this. There are no rules. You see, there is a fight breaking out right here. Now, how do you pick up the uh, the can over here? Let's get that, pick up that trash can. Oh, oh, what the hell is Ric Flair's problem? All right, let's pick up this box. And uh, Hogan put the box down. What an idiot! Now Ric Flair grabbed the pipe there for a second. Oh, Ric Flair is beating the crap out of me with that pipe. Get that old man away from me, y'all. Oh. I'm gonna block. Oh, that didn't work. Let's see if we can get away from this crazy old bastard. Oh, he murdered him with a box. Yeah, take that, you son of a bitch. Oh, he drop kicked me. I didn't know Ric Flair could actually do that still. Whoa, what the hell was that? He threw the lead pipe at his head. What the hell? Oh, I don't know what just happened there. That was nuts. Oh my god, this game is buggy. Oh wait, we're pitting him. Are we gonna win? All right, we actually beat Ric Flair, the uh, dirtiest player of the game, and he was definitely uh, pretty dirty in that match. So this is where you want to go to have a like a tournament mode, I guess. Let's check this out. Oh my god. Right away, we have to go against Goldberg. What the hell is wrong with this game? Are you nuts? And we got the uh, loading screens with all the little tips and everything right here. Up those got the uh, ugly, horrible rendition of Sting. He almost looks like the fake Sting. And we got Goldberg right here. And for a second, I thought Goldberg would look like he had a, a little bit of hair. Goldberg is on hard mode, so... Trying to actually pull a move on Goldberg in hard mode is not going to be fun at all. You see that he's trying to kick my ass and trying to back away from him. <laughs> he, he's uh, really pissed off right now. Oh my god. Double X, oh, then a power slam. Yeah, look at that. That was nuts. If there, oh my god. What the hell? Where did he get that from? See, I don't remember if there was weapon damage in the uh, PlayStation version, but... And now this version of the game there is, and oh my god, the box killed both of us. Beat him with the trash can? Yeah, take that, you son of a bitch. Just think of this almost like Power Stone, but with wrestlers. Now we gotta pin him. Whoa! He no-sold it, you son of a bitch. Alright, pin him. I don't even think he knows where he is right now. Oh my god. Alright, how many power slams do I have to do? Holy crap, Goldberg is nasty. Another power slam. Pin him, pin him. Oh my god, how do you beat Goldberg? Oh, he spared the shit out of me. I think, I think he killed me. Oh my god. Holy crap, the impact on that was nuts. The, uh, the PlayStation version, you don't feel the impact. Like, the impact is just not that good. The N64 version of the game, actually, yeah, there's something about it. It's a lot better. The graphics are still pretty bad, but... The gameplay does feel... Some, there's something about it that feels better on the N64. I just don't know what it is. You know what? There's a chair over here. Let's uh, go grab that chair. He's bludgeoning him with that... Oh! What the hell happened to me? Oh my god, what's he doing to me? Is he doing a jackhammer? Oh no! I am dead. Oh, I kicked out of one. I bet he's pissed off about that. 
Now he's gonna really murder me. Oh no. Holy crap, that sure shattered into pieces. What the hell is that all about? He's on fire. Just look at that. Alright, so let's grab a pipe. Uh oh, this doesn't He ran right into that. Alright, let's pin him and let's see if we can get somewhere. Damn! Neither one of us wants to give up. Alright, Goldberg is jumping on top of that crate right there and he did a axe hammer jump off the top rope. Even though it's not a rope, but you get off that crate right there. Oh, you son of a bitch! Somehow he... Oh my god, he broke a 2 by 4 on me. DDT, alright. Let's uh, see if that will knock his ass out. I didn't do shit. Goldberg is indestructible. He's he's a beast. Yeah, come get me, you son of a bitch. Oh, oh, he hit me in my leg? What the hell was that? I think he broke my leg. Oh, he chokeslammed me. What the hell? What an ass. Oh, no. What's he doing with that? Oh. He smashed a crate on me. And I knocked him out. Wow. What a fight. It definitely felt better, more fun than the uh, the PlayStation version of the game. Another backstage area. And, uh, all right. Oh, oh. Let's see if we can beat up Kevin Nash. Oh, he dodged. What the hell is that? He ripped the whole phone off the wall. That's crazy. It's a payphone. Where are they going? Okay, we're in a backstage area. That is cool. And there's no loading screens either. So we're back out into the same place we were in before. That is actually pretty cool. I never played this much of this game to actually uh, to experience this portion of the game on the N64. I never played the N64 version at all. Alright, so let's, uh... Oh! Another power slam. Got Kevin Nash. Uh, I think the character models look slightly better on the N64. The PlayStation version looks horrible. Like, real bad. Oh, he's doing a jackknife power bomb. Oh my god, I should be dead. <laughs> I completely no-sold that. It's like a common thing in this game. You can have a finisher done to you and you still can kick out, like, easily. So I think that originally the, uh, the idea of this game was it was supposed to be, from what I heard, a PlayStation 2 game. But that game got cancelled and they just rushed it onto N64 and PS1. Oh, another power bomb! And he's going to try to KO me right here. I think he might have knocked me out. Kevin Ash beat me, KO. All right, so we're on our way to creating a uh, Santa Claus. Some of these things are like not working. Okay, so I think this creative wrestler mode is kind of buggy because sometimes the stuff appears and sometimes it doesn't. All right, so we definitely have to give him the proper pants. And I don't think Santa Claus would be wearing something like that. And uh, there is our rendition of WCW Backstage Assault Santa Claus, and now let's see if we can save him. Look at this, this is crazy. Oh my, what's going on here? Oh, the, the funny thing is the, uh, the Santa Claus character model actually looks pretty good compared to the uh, normal wrestlers in the game. I, I definitely think that the uh, developers could have, could have spent a little bit more time making the, the wrestlers look a little bit better. Is that's one thing that's bad about this game? That is a stick, so if we swing it over here, we might be able to set it on fire. Oh yeah! I'll get the stick on fire. Alright, so you see that I'm walking towards him with a stick fire. Fire stick, whatever you want to call it. An Amazon fire stick, yeah right. Fire sticks existed before. Oh, you son of a bitch! What happens here? And I set him on fire, as you can see there, he is on fire. Jimmy Hart is literally laying down on fire, and he's getting up. What the hell? That was nowhere close to connecting. Somehow he lived through that. I don't know how. That son of a bitch. Doesn't look good. 
Oh my god, what the fuck was that? Oh! He super kicked him. Man, he is killing him with those super kicks. Yeah, I think Santa Claus might be re related to the Young Bucks. I mean, look at this. Having a super kick party over here. Now this is oh! Oh my, oh, he blocked my super kick, you son of a bitch. You can't hesitate with this guy. If you do, you'll always get the upper hand. Uh oh! Oh my god! What was that? I think that is it. He did like some sort of flip off that crate right there. That was crazy. Santa Claus beat Jimmy Hart. He murdered him, and wow. That flip off the crate, I did not expect that. That was insane. I did not set that move. I don't know where that came from. I think that the N64 version of the game is actually better. I was expecting... I was not expecting that, to be honest. So, uh, this game gets a thumbs up in my eyes. I think the game is okay. It's not the greatest. It's not the best wrestling game on N64. But it's actually not bad, and it's fun to play. That table can only mean one thing. We're going to be playing the Nintendo 64. And today's episode of Memory Lane going to be playing the god awful, notoriously bad, WCW Nitro for the uh, Nintendo 64. Now the PlayStation copy is definitely a lot better, but we already know that this game is bad, but is there anything that could possibly make it better? Maybe let's try a Game Shark. What happens if we combine this with a Game Shark? Will it make our, our life a little bit easier and better? What can you possibly do in this game with a Game Shark? On the front cover, just like the PlayStation version, it features some WCW superstars. You got Hogan, Goldberg, and Nash. So let's, uh, this also came from, from a video rental place. Look at that. So let's head over to the Nintendo 64 and let's check out what we can do with the Game Shark. Alright, excuse the mess we're here, but we're gonna pop this in and let's see if we can make this work. Now we got a whole different type of power here. Got okay, Game Shark and uh, yeah, Shark. Nitro. It's a deadly combination. Let's meet over by the CRT and let's see what kind of crazy stuff we'll get out of this. It's definitely a dangerous combination right here. Alright, here we are playing. The uh, Game Shark on the N64. This is gonna be a really interesting thing here because I never really used the Game Shark on the Nintendo 64 too much. But apparently, there is stuff on here that we can check out. And we're gonna be playing WCW Nitro on the uh, N64, which is notoriously a bad game. And it uh, looks like we have infinite health for player one. Infinite timeout for player one and a quick count up for player two. So uh, let's uh, see if that actually works. Let's see if that actually works and uh, start game with selected codes. Now it looks very, very much like the uh, Sega Saturn Action replay. And we got the uh, THQ screen right there. We got that screen right there. Got a little example of what the gameplay looks like. Got some bone crushing action right there. Got Kevin Nash and Sting. Oh, power bomb! You got a uh, Hulk Hogan being beat up by uh, I think Chris Jericho, Kurt Henning. It's like a, a lot of different things going on there. So there's a 
very, very loud. Let's turn the sound down just a little bit here before we get a copyright violation here. And of course, my TV turned off. Okay, so those are pretty much uh, what we have there for that. I thought I had more stages than that. Let's see if I do. Yeah, here we go. So, in a WCW Nitro on the PlayStation, there's like a whole bunch of weird looking stages. Nitro, NWO, Graveyard, Spaceship, Circus, Hive, Turbo, Wonderland. There's a lot of weird stuff. Hall of Mirrors. It's the disco stage. So, 1984, I'm not even sure what the hell that is. Texas. We'll put it on random. So, one thing that I loved about this game on the PlayStation is there's plenty of weird, crazy, unlockable characters. And it looks like on the, uh, the N64 version, they, you have unlockable characters. You have mostly wrestlers here. But they, uh, they took out all the obscure, crazy looking characters. Like they had a like a snowman, they, uh, I think they had a bear. They had a lot of weird characters in that game. They had a bee, I think, because there's a beehive level. So let's choose uh, a wrestler. And I'm just gonna pick someone random here. All right, so there we have what appears to be a mirror stage. And to be honest, I don't know exactly how to play this on the on the 64. But I can actually sit outside all day long and the uh it looks like the Game Shark is very very biased towards the computer characters. I'm getting my ass kicked. I kind of like the graphics better on the uh, N64 versus the PlayStation version. I don't know, this looks better to me. And also, the PlayStation version had those really cool FMV video clips of each wrestler. You push circle and you can actually watch them talk. And uh, you can see Macho Man is beating the crap out of me. He's not getting anywhere. So the way this game plays, it plays kind of similar to like Warzone or Attitude. You have to hit a button combination to actually pull a move off. We have to be quick. Because if you're not quick, the computer guy will definitely uh, get you. It's a shame that WCW Thunder never made it to uh, N64. So you see uh, Macho Man is right there. He's uh, a little perturbed right now. My ass kicked by the Macho Man Randy Savage. So that gives you an idea. And you can see right there, there's like a snow stage, there's a that stage right there. Space, you're in space. Now a lot of these stages came from the PlayStation version. It's a disco stage right there. I think the funniest stage is probably the disco stage. So you put the disco stage on. I'm going to show you. It's only fitting if you're playing the disco stage, you play a disco inferno. And, uh,. Let's see here. 
Let's pick a little parka. See what happens here. We can see some crazy stuff happening here. And that Disco Inferno's doing a dance, you see that? And the parka's doing a dance. Every time you taunt, the uh, wrestlers start doing dances, which is pretty funny. You hear the crowd going crazy. You can see the, uh, there's like a disco bar in the background. Everybody's having fun. There's a WCW event taking place inside of a disco hall. All kinds of crazy lights going on here. It's crazy looking. Now, Laparka is definitely one of my all-time favorite wrestlers. He actually wrestles in a MLW right now, as we speak. He actually still wrestles really good, even though he's old. Get my ass kicked. If this was a PlayStation controller, it would be a different story. I really don't know what the hell buttons I'm... Oh, you threw me over this hot. Is there a... Okay. Let's look and see if there's like a button move set option you can look at. Like... My park is beating the crap out of me here. Oh my god, he's really beating me up. Look at this. It's breaking my bones, oh my god. Well, the, as you can see, the, um, the game shark is working. This game is definitely not the greatest. It's much better in the PlayStation. The controls are kind of hard to execute on the uh, 64. I just can't seem to comprehend playing this game on 64. I own the game, but it's, it's, it's a little bit hard. Let's go back here for a second. Let's choose a different stage. There's, there's a jungle stage. Let's check that out. Got a good old Ray Mysterio Jr. See Ray Mysterio Jr. versus uh, Psychosis. That's gonna be a great match. It's back when Ray Mysterio was in his prime. And we're putting a WCW Nitro event in the jungle. We can see the people right there getting all excited. And uh, this is using the Game Shark on the uh, 64. Parka, not, not La Parka, Psychosis is going outside the ring. You got very, very limited commentary also. Let's see if we can, uh... So here's the thing, this game came out kind of like after the PlayStation version. And, uh, you know, N64 gamers already had WCW vs. The World and WCW World Tour, or whatever the hell that game is, was it? Revenge? Already had that in N64, so this game really didn't do anyone any good for 64 gamers. Already had better games. So when it came out, I don't think anyone, too many people bought it. They probably bought it just to buy it, but it's more of an arcade style wrestling game. But. The N64 gamers were already spoiled with uh, Revenge and World Tour. I remember back in the day I did not own a Nintendo 64 right away. Uh, the, uh, one of the first games I owned was Nitro on the uh, PlayStation. As far as wrestling games go during that era, uh, Nitro on the PlayStation was one of the first wrestling games I had owned at that time. And I had a lot of fun playing it. 
and I unlocked like everything in the game. Now I thought all the unlockable stuff was pretty cool. Now if uh, this game had all the characters from the uh, PlayStation version, it would have been better because there's a lot of crazy like fantasy characters on the PlayStation version that you don't get in this one. So you got that. You can see the demonstration actually shows off the, the actual um, jungle stage right there. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to WCW Nightfall. What exactly is 1984? What did I kind of forget what that is. Let's go find out. We'll pick. Okay, that's the laser level. Okay. So you're in space. Pretty interesting looking. Look at that. So you can see that the uh, computer, no matter what they do, they cannot beat me. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to WCW Nightfall. Now, what would have been cool is if you had like unlockables and crazy, crazy stuff like this in Revenge or World Tour. That would have been really, really cool. Uh, but that's only possible when you play Thunder and Nitro. You get some really crazy, insane, unlockable stuff. Uh, that basically gives you an idea how to play this game. You can also do a custom configuration if you want. And yeah, that's uh, Nitro on the PlayStation using the Game Shark, and uh, it makes you invisible, untouchable. Uh, but the game's still hard to play because you still have to execute the moves, and uh, it's not really easy to play at all. So it is pretty cool to see the Game Shark in action on the N64. You don't really see that too often anymore. You can definitely play the tournament if you want to. And as long as you know what the moves are, you can breeze straight through it. And this is a complete roster on the N64 version right here. So I think there's a whole different category of wrestlers on the PlayStation version. There's probably, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six. There's probably about 16 wrestlers missing that are, that are in the PlayStation version that are technically not wrestlers, but they're like, you know, this crazy looking characters and you just don't see them on here at all so that's what we got here you got a battle royal and we have a uh, a snow winter stage arctic anarchy sounds like an ECW pay-per-view to be honest you can put the Hitman heart showing off. And I, to be honest, I kind of like this game when it's slowed down a little bit. So the game always plays it really, really fast. So if it was always at this speed, I would actually like it better. So you can see that when you have four wrestlers in the ring, there is a bit of a slowdown. It could be just a touch faster, but... So that's, the, that's basically their version of the Royal Rumble. You got 30 more wrestlers to go, I guess. Let's quit that. Now, this gives you another example of how the stages look. It's 1984 stage. Uh, pretty cool looking stuff here. You got the disco stage right there, you got the jungle stage. And of course you got the Nitro logo right there. So that is uh, WCW Nitro using the, the Game Shark on the N64. The game is so bad. It's still a lot better on the PlayStation. But it's a lot more fun to play using the uh, the Game Shark. But the controls are a little tough. It's 
The one from playing it on the PlayStation to the 64 is a little, it's a little uh, hard. It takes a lot of getting used to it, actually pull the moves off. So here we have another demonstration right here. Looks like we have Raven, Macho Man, uh, who else do we have? Rick Steiner and Jericho. And Jericho is the current AEW world champion and the AEW is actually pretty good. And uh, check that out. Pretty awesome. So if you enjoyed this episode of Memory Lane and you want to see more Game Shark stuff on the uh, N64, uh, stay tuned because I will definitely be uh, checking more games out and see exactly what they do on N64. And uh, check this out, it's crazy looking. Look at all these stages. Let's look at that. So here we are playing WCW Nitro on the PlayStation. And here's the title screen right here. Look at that, all the fire right there. It looks just like the real program WCW Nitro. Look at that. Now WCW Nitro was released on the PlayStation in 98. And around that time was probably when around when Warzone, WWF Warzone came out and there was already plenty of uh, wrestling games on the N64 that were obviously better games. Now this game right here didn't quite get the respect that it deserved because it was arcade style. Now first, let me be the first to point out the cons. You know, the things that are not so good about this game. And uh, you know, the, the first thing I would like to mention is the audio. While you're playing the game itself, when you're actually wrestling in a match, uh, the background music gets annoying after a while. And also, the uh, commentators basically say the same shit over and over and over again. And it gets old after a while. I never knew Alex Roy could actually power bomb anyone. I've never seen him do that before. Wait, what the hell is he doing? What the hell was that? He actually threw Scott Hall over the side. But now he's dancing. Another con about the game is the, the limited move set. There's not really a whole lot of moves for each wrestler. Some of them are basically the same. But again, it's an arcade style wrestling game. So it's not a simulator. Uh, to be honest, it's actually uh, appropriate for an arcade style wrestling game. That clearly explains why Alex Wright is doing power bombs, because usually he would not be able to do something like that in real life. But yeah, arcade style. Another thing is that when the wrestlers grunt, it actually sounds like they stole the sound effects from uh, Doom. I mean, listen to this. doesn't sound quite the same, but I know for sure that I've heard that grunt sound in a shooter before. Maybe it was Quake, but it definitely sounds quite familiar. Now, the graphics I'm not going to complain about too much, but the only thing that you can really complain about is uh, the crowd. Uh, they pretty much just stay dead still, and they don't move, and they pretty much make the same ambient crowd effect throughout the whole game, as well as taking pictures. They take a, a lot of pictures, as, as you can see there, all those camera flashes. What the hell is that? Alex right through Eddie Grillo over the top rope. And Eddie Grillo got up like nothing happened. Did you see that? Yeah, that's another thing you can expect from this game, is you can beat the shit out of somebody and they'll get up like nothing happened, because it's arcade style. I know a lot of people complain about that, but hey, it is what it is. And also, there is no creator wrestler in this game, unfortunately. Uh, that would have been an interesting feature. Uh, however, let's take a look at some pros about this game. Now, first of all, the graphics on this game, I'm a fan of. I think the character models actually look pretty decent. And uh, the various different arenas and the surroundings on each arena actually look not bad for the exception of just the uh, the crowd doesn't like react or they just, they, just, they just stay dead still. No, that's something I really can't complain about, because if you played an Attitude or Warzone, it was basically the same over on their games, too. If not worse, because uh, on Warzone, it looked like uh, the crowd was a slanted piece of shit, pixelated-looking mess. I mean, look at that. I mean, at least on Nitro, you had the crowd taking pictures, but even on Warzone, the one guy taking pictures in the crowd, the camera flash looks like crap. I mean, look at that. But the actual ring itself, the stage, 
the uh, the actual barriers and the uh, mats outside the ring gate, they actually look legit. They look pretty good. Now the animation in the game is uh, pretty fast. The characters actually move around fast. Wrestlers move much faster than the actual real thing in on real TV. But again, I'm not going to complain about that because that's actually uh, an arcade style wrestling game. So to each its own. The game is what it is, and it's actually doing a pretty good job for an arcade wrestling game. Now another bonus I like about this game that's a pro, in my opinion, is that when you select your characters, you have bonus video clips of each wrestler. And uh, they actually give you a little video message before you actually play the game, and I think that's actually pretty awesome for uh, wrestling fans, such as myself. Now, unfortunately, there's no entrance for each wrestler in the game. There's no entrances at all. But instead, you have a loading screen that has graphics for each wrestler on the main roster, which is pretty awesome. I used to play the hell out of this game back in the day, and I owned WCW Nitro and WWF Warzone, and I played both pretty much equal. I definitely vividly remember playing Nitro with my cousin quite a bit. Now, one thing that is most important and heavily overlooked about WCW Nitro is the unlockable features in this game. Uh, the, the main roster that you see it's limited, but there is a lot of characters that you can unlock in this game. Like, probably three times the amount of what you already have. It's insane. As you can see here, these are some of the unlockable characters, and they look like absolutely from a crazy fantasy land. You have a snowman, you have a ghost, you have a Santa Claus, you have a praying mantis, you actually have a uh, T-Rex dinosaur, you have an actual bear. It's crazy. You actually have... Uh, Another couple of cool features here also where you actually have the yellow and red Hulk Hogan, you have the classic Macho Man, the classic Sting, you have all the color commentators, you have the developer team actually put themselves in this game. This game is awesome with the full roster unlocked. Not only is there unlockable uh, roster, but there's unlockable arenas that are like way, way over the top. I mean, check this out. You can actually do the YMCA dance. In a disco level. What wrestling game have you ever seen that? I mean, this is awesome. Look at that. And there's outdoor stages. There's stages inside of a honey's bee's nest. Uh, it, there's all kinds of stuff in this game that's like way, way, way over the top. There's one particular stage that's a graveyard bonus stage that's unlockable where uh, it's kind of creepy. There's actually a... If you watch closely, there's a little kid that stands off to the side. And I always wondered, like... I always wonder, like, who the hell is that kid and why is he standing there? It always seemed very, very creepy. I mean, look at that. And then you had an actual backstage area where you actually had a wrestling ring. You had to actually wrestling. It wasn't really a backstage area, but if you look carefully, there's actually gateway computer boxes in the background. That's actually pretty funny. There was an actual stage for hell, but if you want to really experience hell, wrestle at the circus with this clown. Look at that clown. That'll give you nightmares. And if you can't afford the LSD simulator for PlayStation, which costs an arm and a leg, don't worry. It's by WCW Nitro. It has its own LSD simulator. Check that out. So overall, this game certainly wasn't perfect, but it sure was fun. And definitely sold quite a bit. To the extent of where WCW Thunder released afterwards. Now, we'll save that for another video. But yeah, this game was, in my opinion, awesome. After... WCW Night Show released on the PlayStation. Thunder released. That's actually not that big of a gap at all. It's only 10 months. You figured that they would wait at least a year. Now, uh, WCW Thunder was basically WCW Night Show but with the improvements. And the major improvements are the following. Now, the crowd actually finally moves in this game. The, you can actually see crowd animation. In Night Show, uh, there was no such thing. It was pretty much a... Uh, Cardboard looking crowd. Although some of the crowd animation is a little bizarre. WCW Thunder also added a steel cage match. And that's actually quite awesome because that was not in Nitro. Now, unfortunately, even though you can imagine that this is actually a really big bonus for a wrestling game. This particular steel cage match wasn't really the greatest because uh, as you can see the whole arena was empty. And uh, the cage match itself, uh, it wasn't really the greatest. It was uh, quite mediocre, and uh, that's the reason why no fans showed up to tonight's show. You now have the ability to use weapons, which is actually pretty fun in this game. Now, there's no blood, but 
Uh, using weapons in this game is actually not bad at all. Nitro, unfortunately, there was no weapons. WCW Thunder now has video entrances, which uh, was missing from uh, Nitro. You had cool loading screens on Nitro, but uh, now you have really cool versus loading screens featuring both superstars. And there appears to be a hell of a lot more match types in uh, Thunder versus uh, Nitro. We can actually uh, do quite a bit more with this game. Uh, the only cons that I can think of on this game would be uh, the audio uh, is pretty much the same as Nitro. We have the commentators repeating the same stuff over and over again. Our bomb. Our bomb. Our bomb. Our bomb. Our bomb. And uh, you also have the same background music. Might be a little bit different, but basically it displays over and over again. Quite loud. Now, despite having the same crap, you now despite having the same crap, your audio, and maybe an ugly-looking audience, and a bad steel cage match. There is some pros about this game. Now, one of them, right off the bat, as mentioned before, is you can use weapons, and the weapons are actually pretty awesome. Uh, and another pro is just the it's improved uh, controls. The controls were a little bit more uh, improved versus Nitro. Uh, it has a very, very impressive roster once you unlock everybody in the game like it's definitely uh, out of all the wrestling games i've played the roster in this game is actually quite impressive and the roster features even the nitro girls you have a lot of wcw wrestlers you have nwo wrestlers you have the four horsemen you have plenty of the cruiserweight wrestlers which is awesome uh, you have also uh, color commentators managers all just about everybody in this game and of course just like nitro you had crazy over-the-top characters that were added into the game as well. And just as a bonus, you also have a whole bunch of developer team uh, personnel that were added into the game. The biggest pro, just like Nitro, was the unlockable content. Whether it was the wrestlers or the uh, actual stages themselves, uh, the unlockable content is insane. It's like a good, big, huge portion of the game because once you unlock all the uh, characters in this game, you have probably over 90 wrestlers, and uh, some of these characters are way, way over the top. Only in WCW Thunder will you see a actual horse legend a cow to death with a steel pipe. Yeah, I took that, you son of a bitch. <laughs> or how about the Native American Indian that tried to actually murder a cowboy with an office chair? I mean, look at that. What the hell? And what about that stupid pig that thought it was a smart idea to pick up a CRT television and show that product of incest what he really looks like? Maybe the little pig thought he was going to run away. But let's take a look at what really happened. He got the slop kicked out of his pig ass. But oh no, that's not the worst of it. And then he got violated. Much like the disco stage on WCW Nitro, Thunder has its own little dancing stage. As you can see here, we have like a... A starfish character dancing with a wireframe character. I mean, look at that. Ain't that fancy. I bet you never thought you'll see a gorilla beating the shit out of an astronaut in space, but surprise. In WCW Thunder, it's possible. I mean, hell, if you want to, you can even have a rooftop brawl. The most ugliest looking background textures of all time. But oh, look at those buildings. Look at that. As you can see here, you have a skeleton and you have a computer looking character with a monitor on his head and an actual hard drive for a body, which is actually pretty cool. Tonight on WCW Thunder, we have a scuba diver who dives 100 feet underneath the sea to kick the shit out of a giant praying mantis. But the praying mantis nearly kills him. Instead, don't miss tonight's WCW Thunder. You can even wrestle in WCW's variation of hell. I mean, look at this. This is what they envisioned hell to look like. I mean, look at that. With a wrestling ring. And with Tony Schiavone repeatedly murdering you with an electric guitar. And then you have this stage right here called Extreme. That's right, as in Extreme Championship Wrestling ECW. Except this is WCW. And if that ring looks familiar, well, you're right. Uh, it was used in WCW Nitro. I mean, check this out. Same exact ring. And of course, he had many uh, pay-per-view stages as well. Now, as a result, 
Uh, WCW Thunder was pretty much a uh, slightly improved version of Nitro with the addition of weapons and a horrible steel cage match. Now, some of the unlockable stages in WCW Nitro I actually liked better. I think they were actually uh, more polished. For those of you who have not seen the Nitro review that I did, please go watch it and you'll see. Now, by the time that Thunder came out on PlayStation, you had the AKI games released on the N64 and you had probably a few WWF games out on the PlayStation. So, yeah, this game, of course, was considered mediocre and it wasn't perfect. So, of course, this was definitely probably the last of its kind. It wasn't nearly as popular as Nitro, but it was a pretty good attempt at trying to be better at what Nitro was before. Unfortunately, it didn't quite make it. And that would be a look back at WCW Thunder on the Sony PlayStation.